Amen. Come on, put your hands together for the word of the Lord. Amen. Out of Judges, out of Judges, the seventh chapter, moving fairly quickly, out of Judges, the seventh chapter, we're going we're gonna to park right at the ninth verse, ninth through the twelfth verse, message translation. Those of you that do not have your handouts, if you raise your hand, our greeters will make sure you have one. Judges, the seventh chapter, verses 9 through 14. Amen. Look what it says. That night, God told Gideon, get up and go down to the camp. I've given it to you. If you have any doubts about going down, go down with Perah, your armor bearer. When you hear what they're saying, You'll be bold and confident. I'm going to read that one more time because I felt like shouting. That night, God told Gideon, somebody say, God told me. Get up and go down to the camp. I've given it to you. If you have any doubts about going down, go down with Perah, your armor bearer. When you hear what they're saying, you'll be bold and confident. Next verse. He and his armor bearer, Perar, went down near the place where sentries, these were guards, that's what sentries mean, guards, were posted. Midian and Amalek, all the Easterners, were spread out on the plain like a swarm of locusts and their camels. Next verse. Past counting like grains of sand on the seashore, Gideon arrived just in time. Somebody say just in time. Just in time to hear a man tell his friend a dream. Somebody say a dream. Tell him a dream. He said, I had this dream. A loaf of barley bread tumbled into the Midianite camp. Next verse. It came to the tent and hit it so hard it collapsed. The tent fell. His friend said, this has to be the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, the Israelite. God has turned Midian, the whole camp, over to him. Back it up. Back it up and drop it. Back it up. To, to, back it up. Back it up. Back it up. Back up the screen. Go back to the right there. Past counting like the grains of sand on the seashore. Gideon arrived just in time to hear a man tell his friend a dream. And from that, here's your topic. Out of the series, Untapped Potential, today's message is, I'm the devil's worst Nightmare. Look at somebody say, I'm the devil's worst nightmare. Yeah, I'm going to use this proclamation that we've been saying for the last Sundays, last couple of Sundays. So here it is. Look at somebody and say, I'm supposed to be in church today. The word that is about to be spoken is for people like me. I believe God is about to turn things in my favor. I know God has great plans for me. I won't miss this opportunity because you're still sleepy because you barely got up. For you or nobody else. So when I say amen, you need to wake up and say amen. And when I get happy... You need to stand up and get happy with me. I need you. Look at one more person say, I need you to believe God with me. Because Amos 3 and 3 says, how can two walk together except we agree? Now, come on, give God praise like you're on your third cup of coffee. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. From the series Untapped Potential, today's message is I am the devil's worst nightmare. 
Uh, here is the review. I told everyone starting this series that we were going to be talking about untapped potential. We we're going to be journeying on how God will use people and places to maximize your potential. God wants to use people. He wants to use you. He wants to use me. He wants to use all of us so that he can maximize what he wants to do through us, in us, for the people around us. And not only that, God wants to maximize, watch this, the impact that he has on places. And I've shared with you on the last several Sundays that he placed us here to make a difference. I called you world changers. I told you that wherever you go, there's something on you that should change where you're at, that you, if you move into a community, if you get a job, if you're connecting in relationships, something is already on you to maximize your impact. In other words, there is no mediocrity about you, that you, you are greatness. Look at it. Put lay hands on yourself. Say, I am. I'm greatness. Yeah, you are anointed to be great. We've talked about on the last couple of weeks on how Jesus and his disciples, they were, they were following Jesus and they had been with him all day. And they got late in the evening. It was time to eat. And the disciples wanted to send them off. And Jesus said, no, nah, you feed them. And the disciples says, hey, on our own, we don't have it. We don't even have enough money to buy enough food for these people. And they looked among the crowd, among, among the congregation, and they found two fish fish and five loaves of bread. Somebody said maximize. Jesus took the two fish and five loaves of bread, gave thanks to his father, tapped into a whole nother resource, and right where they were sitting, they were in the middle of the desert, but they found a patch of grass in the middle of the desert. Won't God do that for you? That in, in your area of dryness, in your place where nothing is acceptable to grow, he will find you a nice little paradise where he will sit you down. Y'all still ain't catch that. I'm preaching that in the middle of your destitution, God will send someone to put $20 in your pocket in the middle of crying late at night. He will still rock you to sleep, wake you up, and then things would have turned around. Listen, what I'm trying to tell you, that he don't have to remove you from the desert for you to find pleasure. He'll sit you down down in the middle of your problems while other people will cry and lose their life about what you deal with. God will put a smile on your face, put a little pep in your step and let you know that he has not failed you. They took the two fish, five loaves and they fed the multitude and then he told them to move from there. He commanded them, glory to God, to get in the ship and go to the other side. Y'all remember that sermon? Go to the other side and in the middle of the going to the other side uh, 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 traveling along watch this the Sea of Galilee yeah the Sea of Galilee which is the third lowest point of water in, in the world it has the deepest depths it's the lowest level of water the third it ranked in the whole world and they crossed this sea in the middle of two mountains where the wind was contrary y'all remember that they were trying to move forward right in the middle of the Sea of Galilee here comes Jesus in the middle of nowhere in the middle of the storm he didn't catch a helicopter he didn't land on the helo pad he didn't catch another boat he walked on the water and one of his disciples the big mouth in the group said Lord if it be you I want to do what you're doing Bid me to come out on the water. And here comes Peter, the big mouth of the group. You know Peter, the one that took a fisherman's knife and cut off a man's ear. And Jesus had to put it back on. You know why he had to put it back on, don't you? He had to put it back on because if he didn't fix what his disciples had done, they would have said that he was the one that caused the ear to be cut. And he couldn't be a perfect sacrifice for you. So before he went to Calvary, he fixed Fix the problem that me and you messed up. Y'all didn't catch that. I'm preaching that he had to put the ear back on so it wouldn't be accounted to him being the perfect sacrifice. And if God can put an ear back on. Come on, if God can fix... 
Peter's problem and put an ear back on so that the sacrifice can be worth it. What more can he do for you? What problems in your life that you done because you moved too quick, because your anger got the best of you, because your temper took over, that God can't fix? Everything about your life has already been fixed on Calvary. Peter steps out on the water, takes an ordinary big mouth person, talk too much person, loud mouth of the group, and he does extraordinary things. Ah, we use that to let you know that no matter how ordinary you think you are, when you have a relationship with God, when you step out on a command, you can do extraordinary stuff. Am I preaching okay? Is this Sunday school lesson fine? Peter didn't just walk on water. I told you he walked out on a command. Jesus told him to come, and he was able to do it. And I need to help about 10 of y'all in here. How many things is the Lord telling you to step out and do? How many things that he's telling you? He's calling you by name, and you got to leave some people behind in order to get it done. Peter the big mouth was the one to leave the 11 in there and though he stepped out and though the people would say that he drowned, ain't nobody talking about how he drowned. Everybody is preaching about how he walked on the water. Y'all didn't catch that right there. Ain't nobody talking about how the first opportunity fell. They talking about how you stepped out and you made it do what it do. Ain't nobody talking about how you lost that last job. Now you got your whole business. Now you got a business business credit now you got ideas and visions got a business plan people are talking about that so here it is now we're talking about Gideon last week we talked about how Gideon said he was inadequate that there's no way that God can use him that because of the, the plight of the children of Israel, now they've been, they've, been, they've been held down by the Midianites. And the Midianites have been taking everything that they had. They grow crops, the Midianites come and take it. They get cattle, the Midianites come and take it. They get a harvest, the Midianites come and take it. This is why we find Gideon hiding in the wine press. The Midianites mess with everything but the liquor. I'm going over here. This is why Gideon saw that it was smart to hide in the wine press to thresh his wheat because the Midianites weren't going to destroy the wine. They just wanted to mess with the resources, so he hides there, and God finds him at his lowest point. This going to help about five people at a 9 a.m. service. Isn't that just like God to come and require of you at your lowest point? Isn't that just like him to tell you that you still got it? There's more in you. It ain't enough to hit you to make you quit. I don't care how many times they put you down. God will find you at your lowest point and tell you to shake your yourself get up dust yourself off I got another round in your life I got another corner I need you to turn this ain't the first time you had to cry yourself to sleep this ain't the first time people wasn't in your corner this ain't the first time you had to start all over he finds Midian he finds Gideon in the wine press here's what I need to tell you that's when you're at your best. Can I help somebody right there? That's when you are at your best. When your back is up against the wall and you can't count on nobody else, here comes God creeping in to tell you that you are more than a conqueror. Gideon says, I'm the least of my family. And my family is the least of the 12 tribes. And God looks at him and says, you mighty man. Of valor. Jeremy, how do God look at you and you got nothing, but he sees something? Based on social status, you got nothing, but God says you're a mighty man of valor. Here's what I want to pause parenthetically and tell you that, listen to me, society's eyes are not like God's eyes. They don't see like God sees. 
Do you hear what I'm telling you? They judge you from the exterior. They judging you on how much money you have. They judging you on what you drive. They judging you, listen to me, on what you obtain, your material stuff. But can I tell you something? Most success ain't based upon material stuff. Most success is not based upon your income. It's based upon, watch this, your outcome. What can you put out that you got on the inside of you? What have you done in life? Where can God take you? He looks at him. He says, you mighty man of valor. So here we go. He's inadequate. He gets employed by God. And then watch this. God changes his name to Jerubbabel, which means let Baal take action. In other words, Gideon was destroying things. Gideon was tearing them up, knocking down all of their idols, and they couldn't do nothing about it because God was with him. Y'all still didn't catch that. I'm going to preach it a little bit better. Here it is right here. No matter what Gideon put his hand to, he was unstoppable, and they couldn't stop him. Y'all y'all still didn't catch that. Here it is. This little joker from the west side of town grew up on food steps. No daddy in the house. Now he's being employed by God, and everything that God allows him to do. He turns it to gold. Y'all still didn't catch that and they still can't stop him. He had to start all over and it's nobody to help him. You don't read where his family had to help him and his enemies still couldn't stop him. Can I just tell three people that will leave here at the end of the day I just need you to look back over your life and see how God had to push you and move you and get you to where you are and here's what I want to tell you and they still can't stop you. They still you can't knock what God is doing in your life. He didn't, he didn't quit, but watch this. Here's what I want to tell you, and I'm coming in. He didn't, he didn't start off like this, though. He tried to get out of the assignment. Is this okay? He tried, he tried, he tried to come up with every... I'm going to show you in a minute. But let me give you some of our excuses. I just ain't got enough money to do that. You don't understand. I don't have no business people in my family. You know, my, you know, my family don't like me. I'm the black sheep in the family. And, you know, my daddy was never there for me. My mama, you know, they, she gave me up when I was little. You know, I wasn't mean, supposed to be, you know, every excuse. My job don't pay enough for that. God, in a way, God can use me. Gideon tried to get out of it. Let me show you. Judges 6, 36 through 40. I'm almost done. Y'all waiting on them fill-ins. Y'all going to have to hold up for me. I wonder why y'all sitting quiet on me. Judges 6, 36 and 4. Look what the message says. Gideon said to God, if this is right, this is when God was getting ready to employ him. He said, if this is right, if you are using me to save Israel, as you've said, then look. He telling God to look. Look here, God. This is what I need you to do. I need you to prove to me that this you ain't no play play. Since you say you use me. You know how we do, God. You know, you know how we do, God. <laughs> God, I, I don't want to pick on nobody. I'm going to turn this way right here. <laughs> God, if he my husband, let him be standing right there. God, if this job for me, when I go in there, I need them to offer me this ride. He said, if this is right, if you use me to save Israel, here's, here's what he said. Then look, I'm placing a fleece of wool on the ground. Next verse. If the dew is on the wool only, but the floor that the wool is on is dry then I know that you will use me to save Israel. How are you going to question what he said and you know he said it? And what 38 verse says, that's what? When he got up early the next morning, he wrung out the fleece enough dew to fill a bowl with water. Next verse. Then watch this. Here you go again. Do y'all, y'all, man, y'all, how many, wink at me, this your first time ever reading this. Okay, I see you, I see you. He says, then God, he's okay, God, you did that thing now. He said, but that was, that was good. 
Come on, y'all, ain't this us? Come on, you know, you, come on now. He was my husband was right there. But let, let me, but but God, if this is really him, he gonna ask me out to dinner tonight. If this really her, God, she gonna walk up and she gonna speak to me. She gonna speak to me in tongues, you know, God, because I need him in church now. He say, don't be impatient with me, God. Hold on, God. Don't be impatient with me. But let me say one more thing. I want to try another time with the fleece. But this time, God, let the fleece stay dry while the ground be wet. How many of us tried to fleece God? We got another verse up there. Is that it? And God, that very night, only the fleece was dry while the ground. How many, here's, here's the preaching part right here. How many times God have to show you that, that he's with you after he done told you? And he has to keep proving. See, you're looking for a big explanation and proof. But start counting the little stuff that you couldn't get done. Come on, start giving thanks for the small things that you, he did give you the job now. Come on, help me out here. But you went and added more bills on the job that you prayed him to give you. And now the job he gave you ain't enough. And you acting like God didn't do it. No, he did it. So here's your feelings. No one has an excuse. You don't have an excuse because you ready for this? The fleece wasn't dry or wet based upon your power in no way. Him destroying the enemies had nothing to do with Gideon's power anyway. God said, I've given it to you. I've already prepared your victory. I need you to get up and participate in what I've already done. Here we go. No matter what your past or present condition, you can overcome all the negatives in your life. Is that okay? I'm using Gideon. Now take Gideon's name out, put your name in there. He, he was poor. If you want to claim poor, he was poor. If you want to claim inadequate, he was inadequate. If you want to claim he didn't have the socialite status, he didn't have it. Whatever you want to claim, he can give you an antidote in this scripture to your problem. And here it is. He's overcoming it. So watch this. You, you wrote it down. I need you to proclaim it. I can. Say it. I can. Overcome all the negatives of my life. There we go. Watch this. John 16 and 33 says this. These things I've spoken unto you is not up on the screen. That ye, that ye might have peace in the world. You shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer because I have already overcome the world. Because Jesus is your Lord and Savior. There's no problem that this world can present to you. That victory is not already your portion. Here we go. They're still looking at the feelings. Let me get to it. You have the right to experience the joy of your what? Come on, say it with me, class. Of your what? Of your salvation. That word salvation is a holistic word. It doesn't just mean you say to wear a dress and wear stockings. I don't even know if you wear stockings in today's church. But to wear stockings, carry a big Bible, wear a suit, and 
preach scriptures and adorably over your head. Salvation means that everything about you is now under the auspices of the kingdom of God. That nothing concerning your life can ever fall victim to the plot and scheme of your enemy. Your salvation means not only are you saved, but your money is saved. Your job is saved. Your life is saved. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He says, I came that you may have life. That's salvation. So we should be looking at our problems going, I'm ready. Whatever you trying to do, I got proof that it ain't going to work. Here we go. I'm keep going. Here we go. The next one is you have the right to experience the joy of living. Come on, say amen. Yeah, you should be living. I love to see the Facebook posting of the people that are out there doing the things that God has called them to do. Enjoy your family. Go out on dates with your family. Go out to amusement park, Walt Disney, all of those things. He died for it. Y'all didn't catch that right there. He died for you have access to who you think he created it for. Amen. So we have to reject all negative, everybody say self-definitions. Gideon told himself he wasn't worthy. He spoke it about himself. It was never what God said. Your definition of your life should be matching up to what God says. Proverbs 23 and 7, let me go. Proverbs 23 and 7 says, for as he thinketh in his heart. Huh? Say it again. So is he. Eat and drink, says he to thee, but his heart is not with thee. You can't think negative about yourself. Don't matter what nobody else says. It's what you say about you. And the enemy will keep bringing people to say it to make you change your mind about what God says about you. This is why you need to be renewed. Come on, help me out. In your, good, good class, in your mind. In your mind. So here's your next fill in. What are your core beliefs about yourself? How do you feel about you? See, my whole life, when I grew up, even though I, we didn't have it, I always had, a, I always had it in my spirit that I was going to have a, a nice place to stay. I wanted the white picket fence. I wanted the dog. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I, I wanted to I always had it. I, man, I, y'all, y'all, y'all still quiet on me. I used to sit on the porch, and when the car rolled down the street, I said, that's my car. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all still don't catch what I'm saying. And if we had the opportunity to ride in somebody's car, and we were riding through a neighborhood, i look at a house and say, that's my house. Watch this. I never looked at a raggedy car and said, and I never looked at a raggedy house. You know why? Because God didn't build me, build me with raggedy in me. This is why only good things resonate with me because he placed good things in me. And you have to start thinking good things about yourself. I am healed. Uh, He didn't create me to suffer through sickness and illness. I am whole. I am delivered. My life is blessed. I don't care what the enemy is saying. I am the head and not the to tell. You have to speak these things over your life. I don't care what your boss is trying to place in front of you. No, I am more than a conqueror. God has blessed me and he's blessing you. Amen. So what are your core beliefs about yourself? I'm coming to the text, y'all. Joel 3, 9 and 10 says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare for war. Wake up with the mighty men. Let all the men of the war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and prune hooks into spears. Let the weak. That's what I'm trying to get to, Mikhail. Let the weak say, Oh, you're going to get down. 
But what do you do when you get down? Let me hurry to the text. I got five minutes. Let me hurry to the text. Here it is. Gideon is doubting whether or not God has given him the Midianite camp. And God says, I tell you what you do. Since you don't believe me, I want you to go down to the camp. And I'm going to let you hear your enemy talking about you. Y'all didn't catch that right there? And anybody ever walked up on a conversation and you felt silly? Man, I, man, I feel like running out here. Anybody ever stepped up in the break room and it got quiet all of a sudden? Any, anybody ever slid up on the people you know they've been whispering about you? And God, now, they, they, this, this time what I want to tell you, God didn't let them be quiet on Gideon. God let Gideon stand at a distance and overhear how good he was, how great he was, how bad he was. Can I help y'all out? It's a miserable position for your enemy to have to brag about you. Y'all didn't catch that right there. I'm closing on that part right there. Don't you know it hurts them to have to brag how you keep moving, keep going, keep doing it, keep bouncing back. But they got to say it because God has already showed it to them. He says, I tell you what you do. I'm going to holler one time, y'all. It's going to be a quick one, too. I'm going to throw it up and I'm going to let it go. He, 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 says, he says, I want you to do, I want you to go down. To the enemy's camp, and I'm gonna let you overhear what they're saying about you. He said, But if you're scared to go by yourself, I need you to take Perot with you. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, I need you to take a ride with me. We ain't gonna stay long, but just in case something jump off. I need somebody that know how to swing a stick. Y'all didn't catch that what I just said. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, are you my para? I need you to get all of your Vaseline. Take off all your heels and leave your lace front at the house. We got to take a trip. Have I got a witness here? So he... He said this, he said this, one. I'm, I'm, I'm almost there. I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase it. I got to go. Y'all stay on your feet. Don't, don't sit down. Y'all stay on your feet right there. He said, I tell you what to do. He said, take Perot with you. Man, you got to have one person in your life. You got to have at least one person in your life. Here's what I want to point out to you. Gideon didn't even tell Perot what the ride was about. Did you hear what I just said? He didn't even tell Perot that we got to go over here and fight somebody. You know how when you was in elementary school, you had that one friend that come up to your class and look, me and you got to have a fight at the end of the school. These boys over there talking mess and you looking at your friend talking about what I do. All right, but let me tell you, you got to have one person in your life that you don't have to explain your next move to. They just ready to ride. Or die. Y'all didn't catch that right there. I got to have one person that believe God for me. Have I got a witness here? Do I have one person that appraise God with me? Do I have one person that believe God for my next go round? Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, I don't know your name. But today, your name is Perah. We got to ride out. Grab your bag. Grab your weapon and take a ride with me. We got to turn a few corners. Tell your neighbor, it's your neighbor. The pastor done said, we got to turn a few corners. We got to go ahead and take a step out. I got to tell somebody, grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, we're stepping out. I dare you to take one step. I dare you to take another step. I dare you to take another step. Now lean in. Let me tell you what the enemy is saying. I need somebody to lean in. 
Lean in and let me tell you what they're saying. You're blessed and highly favored. Go ahead and lean in. You're the head and not the tail. Go ahead and lean in. You're above and not beneath. Say yes. Say yes. Yeah. Lean in. The enemy is talking about you. I'm healed. The enemy is talking about you. I'm delivered. The enemy is talking about you. I've overcame all of my problems. I got three reasons why you ought to praise God. Can I give you three reasons? Somebody say yeah. Do you want the three reasons? Here go reason number one. You're saved by the Spirit of God. Reason number two. You're saved by the Spirit of God. Reason number three. You're saved by the Spirit of God. Say yes. Say yes. Say it. I am. Somebody say, I am the devil's worst nightmare. He hate to see me coming because every time I show up, he's going to lose. Will somebody show glory? Somebody show glory. 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 Everybody on your feet. Do you hear? You cannot be stopped as you remain on your feet. Here's the most important decision you're going to have to make. Are you going to keep trying to offer God excuses? already told you and he showed you I'm with you how many times do I have to heal you to prove that I love you how many times do I have to bounce you back to show you that I'm not going to let nothing destroy you my name is on you And if you go down, if you lose, my name is on the line. I can't let you lose because you belong to me. It's not how you started. It's how you finished.